away from you I tried to walk alone But my strength it always goes Away from me Away from me I long for you in the morning I long for you at night Rested when I'm with you, I'm restless apart from you, my God. As I walk away, I hear your spirit say, Come to me, come to me. My heart cries to you every day, hey, but I let myself get pulled away. The demons inside me, they get the best of me. Why do I leave you and choose to be in torture? I long for you in the morning, I long for you at night. I'm rested when I'm with you, but restless apart from you, my God. behind I choose you I choose you take my hand Jesus take my hand I've been stubborn enough Jesus you're enough God forgive me for my away from you God help me to, to stand for you now I long for you in the morning I long for you at night I'm rested when I'm with you restless apart from you Amen. Amen. Now it's time for uh, Mr. Wayne for a great message for us. Amen. That was a great playing on the clarinet, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, great playing on the guitar, buddy. Nice voice. <laughs> so here we are at the Craig and Wayne show. And uh, we're back again. Uh, such a surprise. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we hope everybody out there is doing well. Um, we, we don't get on quite as much, but... When we can get on, we get on. So we love you guys, and uh, we hope this message becomes a blessing to you. But I, I, uh, I want to start out with a prayer, first of all. 
So, Father God, we come before you, throne of grace, Lord, and we come with the spirit of humility and, and love, Lord, because without you, Lord, we wouldn't have love. We wouldn't have the kind of things we have, and we wouldn't be able to do the kind of things we do, Lord, because it's about you, Lord. It's not about us. And so, Lord, may we empty ourselves of ourselves and be a vessel for you, Lord. And that's what our hopes and dreams are for today, that we would do your will according to your ways and your will. But we want to pray for all Christians out there, Lord, all of them, that they would come to know and love you the way you would want them to, Lord, and that they would be blessed in all things. And, Lord, we also pray that your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, would uh, take charge of this message, Lord, and, and that it would be um, productive and someone would glean from it and be blessed by it, Lord, because it's all about you, Lord. So, Lord, we uh, we, li we leave it up to you, Lord. We thank you for the, the song. Uh, actually, it was a beautiful song by Craig who originated that music. And so I, uh, I thank you for Craig and how what a blessing he's been to me, Lord. Not only... A blessing, Lord, that you put in our lives, but when you said to your disciples, you said this, you said, I will no longer call you my disciples, I will call you my friends. And that's how I feel about Craig, he's no longer my disciple, he's my friend, because he can actually do discipling himself at this point. Uh, he's learned much and he's a mighty man of God. So I thank you for him, Lord, and I thank you for this message, and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, um, kind of interesting, uh, the message is actually, you know, I have a prison ministry that I'm involved in, and there's a, a couple of uh, prisoners that I deal with, and this particular one, his name is Kenny, and uh, I've been with him for about a year now or so, and we, uh, you know, he's, been, he's a lifer, he's been in there for 30 years for, you know, a terrible crime, but at the same time, he's been crucified with Christ, and it's he no longer lives. It's Christ that lived in him. Just like David, when he was uh, messing up, and, uh, you know, he did the adultery thing with Bathsheba, and set up Uriah for murder. I mean, but he had a contrite heart, and a broken spirit. And Lord, he uh, came to the Lord, and he, uh, he asked for blessing, and Lord, reach out to him, because David was always known as a man after God's own heart. And so you see his life, though he uh, suffered consequences, you see good things about King David. He was the best and mightiest king of all times, except for the Lord Je Jesus, God. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. So the message, as far as Kenny goes, I, uh, I had asked him if he would uh, um, do a message. And uh, let me share it uh, for him. So I want to give Kenny the, the message uh, credit. This is his message. I'm just going to uh, share it and maybe expound a little bit on it. But the, the whole point is that he did this message, and it came from his study, from, because he spends much time in the Word. He, he ministers to prisoners in there. And, uh, and they're lonely. Those people are lonely. And if you ever have a desire to write a letter to a prisoner, please get a hold of me. And, uh, you know, maybe we can bless some prisoners because uh, they're, they're in much need of love more than anything else. It's love and, and, and to get their focus on, on Jesus and what he's about. So, let me just, excuse me, I have to drink. And so... I'm going to take the message in. I asked him if he would give his perspective basically on chapter 7. And it was kind of a general message because I, uh, there were certain areas where he wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't, I didn't want him to take a, long, a lot of time to do it, but there were certain scriptures that, you know, he could have really have, uh, you know, perseverated over. And, and I didn't want him to do that. So I wanted to give him a, a general short message. So, and he took it from uh, Matthew chapter 7. And this is how it went for him. Um, first of all, he was focused on 
verses 1 through 3. And this is what it says in 1 through 3. Judge not that ye be not judged. For what, for with what judgment you, you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? And based on that, this is what he says. Uh, he says, judge not that you be not judged. This, for, this verse should not be taught in isolation of other scriptures that balance it out. For instance, mercy triumphs over judgment is the point, not judge not. There's a place for judgment as long as the motive is right. And then he goes to Leviticus 19, 15 through 18, which I'll share with you, and I'll say what he says. And this is what it says. You shall do no justice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. In righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go about as a talebearer, that would be a gossiper, among your people, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. Verse 17, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. And you shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as you yourself. I am the Lord. So, let's just go a little further. And then he says, in regards to Leviticus 19, 15 through 18, explains components of a righteous judgment where there is no injustice, no hate in the heart, no complicity to sin of the others, no bitter vengeance and no pigeonholing, <laughs> labeling, he means. I like his uh, <laughs> way he describes things. He's really a really nice man. So now let's go from uh, verses 3 through 5. And this is what it says in 3 through 5. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look at a plank in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, <laughs> then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So, you know, basically... Uh, well, I'm going to show what he says. I don't want to expound. So, and he says, uh, before I judge anyone else, I must judge myself. And that's true. That we should examine ourselves. Often, harsh judgment of others is really judgment of what I don't like about myself or something that I had overcome in my own personality. And then to verse 6. Do not give what is holy to the dogs nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. In 6 he says, Judge only those I know will receive it. That means I should typically first develop a relationship that has trust and intimacy. This speaks to how I progress my own relationship. And that's really cool that he has shared that because that's the truth. And then he gets on to 7, 7 through 11. And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And continuing, or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? And he says here, when someone, this speaks, you know, he's talking about how this speaks to his life. And he says, with God, when you ask, he says, it is request and inquiry. And when you seek, is actually searching deeper into who God is and what he's about, you know, getting into the word. 
Okay, so we're going to stop expounding like that. So, in, and also he says, knock. And that is actually taking action and having initiative and in, uh, reaching out to the Lord and knowing who he is. In verse 12, it says, let's see, 12. Therefore, whatever you want to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And he says, this makes myself attentive, available to the needs of others, just as God does to me. In other words, he's always there for him. You know, when we focus on God, as we grow near to him, he grows near to us. And so, so it's pretty cool what he's uh, sharing here. In uh, verses 13 and 14, and that says, well, well, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are only a few who find it. And he shares this. There are no shortcuts in relationship building. It has to be experienced turmoil to come out better. Without tribulations is a shallow relationship. Too many people avoid turmoil and tribulation because that basically helps gain growth, character, and it gives you a better perspective on things. And uh, we're going to end up shortly, but then he talks about 15 through 23, so I'm just going to read that. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears... No, let's see. But a bad tree bears bad fruit, and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. And he goes to 23, so... Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Continuing, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me you who practice lawlessness. And this is what he shares. Things are not always as they appear. As relationship building progresses, we see the fruit. Not by what is said, lip action, rather by our fruit. Are we proved to be God's people? It is a timely process to bear fruit. And and that's what we need to do by sharing the word and uh, praying and uh, sharing with one another. That's, and, and giving our, getting out of ourselves and dying to self and dying to sin. And that's actually when we can begin to bear fruit and, uh, and mature in the Lord. Now I'm expounding a little here. You cut it short there. But as we, as we focus in on God and, and get out of ourselves, I'm talking about no pride. Uh, get away from pride, have a spirit of humility. And then at that point, we can start to bear fruit and, uh, and continue to mature in the Lord. And it's not going to happen overnight. But we are works in progress. And eventually, you'll have a nice fruit tree. <laughs> so that's kind of... Me. And finally, in 24th and 26th, he says this. Uh, where is that? So, oh, here we go. 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 Page 24 and 26. And it says this. Therefore, whoever hears these things of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. 
and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was his fall. And he just shares quickly this. He says, faith, relationship to God is an action, a lifestyle, and it must be built on a rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. So that's his message. And I liked it a lot because, uh, you know, he's, he's been in prison for 30 years now. And uh, you know, he had, his parole had come up and I had a opportunity to speak for him but the crime was uh was uh difficult it was a tough crime and uh i don't want to get into that but what i want to say is that that man has been crucified with christ and he no longer lives but christ lives in him and i can and we know that because you, you can see the fruit in him and you know there's many times he's blessed me I think of uh, Proverbs 17, uh, no, Proverbs 27, 17, and it talks about iron sharpens iron. And that's what it's like for Kenny and myself. That's even like what it's like for Craig and, yeah. and myself. Because Craig, I don't, no longer is he a disciple to me. He's my friend. Yeah. And I love him. He knows that. And he loves me. And uh, as a matter of fact, we'll be on, uh, uh, what's that show? The Tim West Show, that's, uh, what's the, what's the station? Uh, Tim and the Jaw on SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud. SoundCloud and MixCloud. Yeah, MixCloud. MixCloud tonight between 8 and 10. Craig will be playing about 10 or 12 songs. Tim and the Jaw West. Tim and, ja Tim and the Jaw West uh, Productions. So we'll have an opportunity to be on tonight between 10 and 12. And you probably might not even get this message that fast, but maybe you will. So, uh, basically, that's the end of the message. I uh, I just want to share that, you know, if anybody ever, again, like I was sharing earlier, if anybody will never, ever has a desire to write a letter to a prisoner, I have a list of prisoners that would love people to write to him, them. So, if you have that in your heart, if you have a perspective to want to, love on somebody and, and share the word with them and, and you want to write a letter every once in a while, they would love that. And that would be a godly thing. So let's just, uh, uh, I just want to end by saying, uh, Craig and I, we love you. We always have. And we always, we continue to pray for you. And we uh, hope that you pray for us on occasion. But again, uh, I thank Kenny for writing this message, and it was a good message. And I hope you got something from it. And uh, we just thank you once again, and uh, again, we love you, and we'll see you next week, most likely. Be blessed. Have a great day.